Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are discussing about the insulin infusion protocols in DKA, HHS or any other hyperglycemic emergencies. Insulin is the third option or third line of management in DKA. First line of management is fluid, second line is correction of potassium, third line is insulin infusion. Because the major problem in DKA or HHS is the fluid loss, fluid deficiency. Once you correct the fluid deficiency, sugar may come down with the fluid correction. Second treatment option is hypokalemia treatment because most of the time when the sugars are high, potassium will go down. We start insulin initially itself, the potassium can further shift and drop can be severe. So correct the potassium, then only we will start insulin. So now we are discussing how to start and stop insulin in DK. Whenever we have a patient who is having DK, we start with fluid initially, correct the uh, sodium uh, water deficiency first, then go for potassium deficiency, correct it, then we will start insulin as an infusion. Insulin infusion is recommended in DK with severe dehydration. So some patients, we, like not in DK, many patients who is having high blood sugar, we can e even give subcutaneous or IM insulin. But remember, when we are giving IM or subcutaneous insulin in DK, there will be severe water deprivation, wa water deficiency is there. Whenever the circulation is not normal because of the wa water deficiency, the insulin what we are injecting may not go to the circulation and it may not act. So, when the patient is having DK, there will be severe deficiency of water, the circulation will be defective. So, even if we give subcutaneous injection or IM injection, it may not act. So, in that condition, we always start insulin infusion. The initial infusion protocol for any patient who is having high blood sugar is 0.15 units per kg regular insulin. That is, uh, normally we get a regular insulin, but which is very clear insulin followed by a continuous infusion of regular insulin prepared in normal saline. So you can start with a bolus dose or you can even avoid the bolus dose because insulin infusion is not an emergency in DKA. Emergency is correction of water deficiency and potassium correction. So you can start insulin as a bolus that is 0.15 units per kg or you can straight away start it as an infusion per hour protocol. The insulin should be diluted in normal cell. Add 50 units of regular insulin. Normally we give Actrapid. That is a regular insulin. In 50 ml normal cell for infusion. So initially we can start with 6 to 7.5 units because if it is 1.5 units per kg for a 50 kg it will be around 7.5 units infusion. So we can for example, here this patient is having 625 milligram per deciliter uh, sugar. So, initial bolus or infusion can be given as 7.5. Now, we start for easy to understand purpose, we start 6 units per hour. How we are calculating this 6 units per hour is 625 by 100. That gives 6.25 around it around 6 or 6.5 that is the insulin infusion required in the first hour so earlier i told that 0.15 units per kg can be given as initial bolus or infusion for first hour but afterwards we can calculate like this if the patient is having 500 milligram per deciliter it will be 5 units per hour if the patient is having 400 milligram per deciliter, the infusion will for that hour is 4 units per hour, 300, 3 units per hour, 200, 2 units per hour, then maintain at 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 units per kg per hour infusion. Remember not to start insulin infusion abruptly. There are some protocols for st stopping the insulin also. So whenever the patient is having DK, start with fluid. So correct the potassium, then start the infusion at a rate of uh, 0.15 unit per kg initially, then 
according to the blood sugar you can correct the infusion protocol if it is 600 6 units per hour 400 500 5 units per hour 400 4 units per hour but remember after one hour of the infusion suppose the blood sugar is 600 we have started 6 units per hour initial infusion after one hour if it is 625 or 700 or even 600 we have to double the dose we have to make uh, 6 units to 12 units there is a best uh, option in DK so double the dose if it is coming down slowly uh, reduce the uh, insulin infusion never try to reduce the sugars rapidly that will create problem patients requiring IV insulin are usually kept in NPO so initial phase of DK we keep the patient in NPO once the patient is stabilized initial phase then we can start oral feeds and slowly the DK will be corrected then check the blood sugar every hour when we are giving insulin infusion check the blood sugar every hour if no reduction in the first hour that is the uh, uh, advisable reduction in blood sugar is 50 to 75 milligram per deciliter per hour rate of insulin should be doubled like what I previously told from 6 units if it is not coming down properly like 50 to 75 milligram per deciliter drop is there not there you double it from 6 to 12 or from 5 to 10 or from 4 to 8 repeat it again every hourly and you should get an appropriate response that is a decrease in blood sugar should be 50 to 75 milligram per deciliter per hour that is an appropriate response when we are giving larger volumes of insulin we have to always think about insulin resistance if we are giving 100 units per day more than 100 units of insulin per day as an infusion always think about uh, insulin resistance in that case you may go to go, go for analog insulin not routine insulin otherwise routine insulin will be uh, as good as analog insulin in a regular case excessively rapid correction of hyperglycemia more than 100 milligram per deciliter should be avoided to avoid the risk of osmotic encephalopathy so sudden drop in blood sugar can lead to osmotic swelling of the uh, uh, brain cells and that should be avoided so the uh, prefer preferable range of uh, drop in uh, sugar is 50 to 75 milligram per deciliter per hour that should be given so when we start fluid itself sugars will start coming down and when we start insulin uh, it may drop further so the ex ex uh, expected correction uh, during this uh, fluid and insulin therapy is 50 to 75 milligram per deciliter per hour the uh, the actual fall in the blood sugar is more than that produced by insulin alone because we are giving fluid that also reduces the sugar the fluid rep repletion or fluid correction can initially reduce the blood sugar by 35 to 70 milligram per deciliter per hour due to both hemodilution and increased urinary loss due to enhanced renal perfusion the rate of fall in the blood sugar may be more pronounced in patients with hhs who are typically more volume depleted so when we start fluid itself sugar start coming down started coming down that is 35 to 70 milligram per deciliter when you add insulin further drop can occur so monitor the blood sugar drop it should not be more than 75 milligram per deciliter per hour now during the treatment of uh, insulin infusion some patients may go to hypoglycemia when we are continuing insulin infusion never stop the infusion abruptly even if the patient go to slightly towards the hypoglycemic side we can correct with the hypoglycemia can be corrected with the dextrose containing saline infusion that is a separate issue so when we are treating uh, the patient with fluid normally when the blood sugar drops less than 250 we start dextrose containing saline so we have to continue the insulin infusion in a very low or minimal dose when the patient go to hypoglycemic state but if the patient develops severe hypoglycemia that is less than 50 milligram per deciliter we have to stop the insulin infusion and give one ampule dextrose uh, solution recheck the blood sugar every 15 minutes it should be more than 90 milligram per deciliter and 
recheck blood glucose every hour when it is more than 140 mg per deciliter wait for 30 minutes restart insulin infusion at 50% of the most recent rate so suppose we were giving 2 units per hour now 50% of that means 1 unit per hour if the blood sugar is 50 to 74 again stop the insulin give dextrose recheck blood sugar repeatedly and when it more than 140 wait for 30 minutes then restart insulin again at 50% of the last infusion rate again if the blood sugar is 75 to 99 stop the infusion recheck the blood sugar every uh, hourly then restart the insulin infusion at 75% of the last infusion rate so these all things are uh, we are practicing only when the patient is developing hypoglycemic episode so that should be followed now when we are treating dk another important problem which can occur is potassium deficiency if the uh, so many patients who is having high blood sugar can have relative potassium deficiency because of the shift hypokalemia if the initial serum potassium is less than 3.3 milliequivalents do not give insulin until the potassium is corrected with a uh, peripheral or central line infusion of kcl Uh, till it become more than 3.3 never give insulin measure glucose every 1 to 2 hours measure electrolytes potassium bicarbonate phosphate and anion gap every 4 hour for the first 24 hours monitor blood sugar blood pressure pulse oxygen saturation mental status fluid intake output chart every 1 to 4 hours continue all this above steps till the patient is stable sugar is 150 to 50 mg per deciliter and acidosis resolved that is very important abg should not show any acidosis any uh, ketone bodies in the blood insulin infusion may be decreased to 0.05 to 0.1 unit per kg per hour to prevent dangerous hypoglycemia administer intermediate or long acting insulin as soon as patient start eating so once the patient is stabilized and when they start eating we have to switch from the long short acting insulin what we were giving in dk to a long acting insulin so that is very important suppose we are giving 100 units in last 24 hours that is the same amount of insulin required by the patient when we treat with the subcutaneous injection so when patient started uh, taking food his ketone bodies are negative i am giving last 24 hours i have given 100 units now i have to switch to subcutaneous insulin same 100 units i have to give but that will be in divided doses i can give uh, 20 units four times or 25 unit 25 units four times or 30 to 35 units three times both are possible so i have to convert to uh, short acting insulin as a fixed subcutaneous doses suppose we are giving after this uh, subcutaneous short acting insulin if we want to change to long acting insulin or mix of insulins we have to take 2/3 of the last dose suppose i am giving 35 units three times short acting insulin when i want to make it mix mixed type of insulin i have i have given i have to give 2/3 of the last dose so 2/3 of the 100 will be somewhere around 75 in that 2/3 should be given in the morning one third should be given in the evening so if the patient required 100 units in dk management when we convert to short acting insulin 100 units in divided doses next day then we become make it short uh, long acting insulin it will be two third of that 100 unit that will be around 75 units in that two third should be given in the morning that may be around 50 units in the morning and 25 units in the night that's a switching of insulin infusion to regular insulin subcutaneous to long acting insulin in the ward remember an overlapping of subcutaneous insulin should be given when the when we are giving insulin infusion and give a dose of insulin at least 30 minutes before stopping the iv infusion protocol so we are continuing with 1 units insulin per hour continue that and if you want to give 30 units give 30 units wait for 30 minutes 
then stop the insulin infusions there is a protocol called as delta protocol this protocol is uh, developed by yale diabetes center for insulin infusion that has got a, a stepwise uh, approach towards the blood sugar you can see in this chart you require this chart to correct this uh, doses but what i have explained previously is anybody can easily remember that uh, how to correct the insulin but uh, major hospital go according to this yale diabetes center protocol this uh, delta protocol you can follow this delta protocol uh, and you can correct the dose of insulin every time so that is also possible so according to delta protocol you can go like this current infusion rate that's an example 10 units per hour new blood glucose value is 500 mg per deciliter go to the column you have blood glucose, blood glucose more than 200 mg per deciliter infusion by 2 delta change in the infusion rate 2 delta is equal to 2 into rate change according to the chart increase the infusion 3 units to be added to current infusion dose that is 6 plus 3 9 units so this is a another this is this delta protocol is an an another protocol to start and continue the infusion according to this uh, peculiar type of protocol uh, if you have this chart it will be very easy uh, to assess what is the uh, dose of insulin required for this patient otherwise just remember the insulin uh, rate can be decided by blood sugar by 100 suppose it is 600 by 100 you will get 6 units per hour that should be the infusion ball for that hour so that should be very clear or you can go for delta protocol so we have discussed about uh, insulin therapy in dk it is very very important but never start insulin as a first line agent in dk first line agent is fluid resuscitation then potassium correction Third one only, your insulin correction. Thank you.